We have been studying Antarctic fur seals for a long time because they are a very good indicator of the ocean environment. The main food of Antarctic fur seals is Antarctic krill and Antarctic krill is a key species for the entire Southern Ocean. Up until the 1990s, the Antarctic fur seal populations were thought to be stable. Since then, the population has started to decline. For this paper, we've put together over three decades of individual-based data, environmental data, and climate data. We wanted to know specifically after many years of analyzing those data, what is bringing down the population of fur seals and if that is a problem that is affecting the entire ecosystem. Amongst those pups that were born, only those that had a bigger mass, bigger body weight, would reach uh, the breeding age. And of those that would reach the breeding age, only the biggest ones for their age compared to 20 years ago were the ones that were effectively breeding. And so that was a first result that was consistent with a lack of food in the system, but not an interannual lack of food between year to year, but a long-term lack of food. So in other words, the first seals were showing food stress. Climate has been changing on South Georgia since the 1990s very rapidly. Temperatures both of the air and the, and the ocean have been increasing and the sea ice extent further south has been decreasing. And all has been related to a change in the availability of krill. Um, we found that the, there has been an amazing change very unprecedented in the heterozygosity of Antarctic fur seals. Let me explain what heterozygosity is because it may be a bit of a difficult term for many people. You get one strand of DNA from your mother and you get one strand of DNA from your dad if you are a sexually reproducing organism like humans, like dogs, like flies. And along those strands of DNA there are points between each one, each other, that are the same and points that are different. So uh, the more different that are those strands of DNA, the more heterozygous is an individual. And heterozygosity, which is the characteristic of being heterozygous, has been associated with higher fitness. Fitness in the sense that you are more able to survive and you are more able to reproduce successfully. This is Darwinian fitness. And we found that fur seals over a period of more than two decades had been selected for heterozygosity, higher levels of heterozygosity, which is unprecedented in any long-lived uh, mammal. We would think that because females that breed now are more, are more heterozygous, they can cope better with climate change. But in fact, that's not the case. Because these females, when they breed, they're having pups to which they cannot pass their heterozygosity. They cannot pass their fitness advantage. And then with each generation, because heterozygosity is not evolving, then the clock resets and the environment has to select fitter animals and therefore those less fit are lost and the population is in decline. This result is important in a wider context because the extreme re response of fur seals to the lack of food reflects also on the lack of food for other key components of the ecosystem. And if climate change is changing now the availability of krill for fur seals, it is also changing it for other major predators of krill, including albatrosses, penguins, whales, fish, many of which are really abundant and they are important for the structuring and the functioning of the ecosystem at South Georgia. Understanding these changes in the long term in the fur seals is one of the best things we can do to anticipate how not only the fur seals but the entire ecosystem is going to respond to future changes in the climate.